Malang no Rivadu, um, it's good to see you again after all the events of your life in exile. I think the last time we met was in the UK when came for the May 29 event last year. It's been so, a how have you been feeling? Wonderful. Good. I'm happy. I'm in Abuja. It's good, really. It feels good to be home. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing, really. I have to be back to Abuja home people and uh, to be part of the Nigerian thing again. Uh, I'm, I'm a happy person. And then we suddenly heard that you want to become Nigeria's president. So, and all the emphasis is on you know, credentials as an anti-corruption fighter. Yes. So what other aspects of your life do you think has prepared you for your aspiration? Well, that is true. I do have the intention to seek to contest the office of president of the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria. And uh, like you said, uh, uh, people are talking about me. And, maybe mostly on issues to do with anti-corruption or what we attempted to do in addressing the problem of corruption in Nigeria. But I'm Nuguri a Nigerian that got qualified after graduating uh, uh, as a graduate of Amadeville University in 1983. Went to the law school, qualified as a lawyer, and then went and did my NYC. And after that, decided on my own after being a qualified lawyer, and I want to see and check those who are today are, uh, attempting to also be candidates in Nigeria, maybe compare my own and their own. Uh, I joined the Nigerian police force, willingly, really, on my own. Uh, and I worked for the government of Nigeria for 25 years. 25 years of my life, I put it into public service. And I don't know any other person who could say of that, who might have that as his own in terms of years of uh, public service. Uh, I was a police officer. As a police officer, I did community work. I, I fought for what was right and justice. Uh, I did the normal, regular police work. Even being uh, qualified as a lawyer, later on I became a prosecutor. At a point in this country, we were few uh, that could boast of even having convictions. In the, in the 90s, and we were one of the best. I was part of the uh, team that handled the fell bank uh, inquiry and the attempt to sanitize the banking sector. I was extremely very active. I, I participated fully. Uh, I was a federal prosecutor. I had convictions, probably more than any other person as at that time in this country. In that capacity also, I was also at one time a part of the Interpol. I, I work at the international level I'm from Nigeria. And, uh, and after that, uh, I had a chance. And I had an opportunity in 2003 to set up an, a government agency, EFCC. And like I've always been saying, I said this separately, that it was a piece of paper that was given to me as an individual, probably who was working in the Nigerian Police Force. Mm. But to set up an agency, a government agency, and from the onset, I understood clearly what was needed. I set out, and we succeeded. And we set up an agency that delivers. It's still the talk of not just Nigeria, but the world. Uh, it was an administrative responsibility. It was a responsibility to create something out of nothing. It was not a police work. Neither was it like an EFCC or anti-corruption world. It is about ability for an individual to create something that works. Government agency, build it, bring people, train them, bring the tools, and then it delivers. In that capacity also, I became part of a management team, an economic management team that managed the economy of Nigeria between 2003 to 2007. I was one of the key uh, figures that helped to you know, manage the economy. An economy that at the time when we got in, when we started, was almost at its own needs. For example, the simple thing that in Nigeria in 2007, I mean 2003, Nigeria had less than $7 billion in its own reserve. Part of the work we did, and I was central to it, in 2007, we had over $65 billion in our own reserve. In addition to, of course, wiping out the entire debt, the national debt of Nigeria. 
which was over 30 billion dollars. In addition, of course, to making things in a way that it helped, it helped to improve the economy. We started having boom in the capital market, the revitalization of the banking sector. Suddenly things started changing and it was part of the team. After that, after 2007, after I left the country, I had a chance to be a senior fellow at St. Anthony, Oxford University, one of the best in the world. I was there, and I, my, I was there, I was part of it, I, I participated fully in the whole uh, academic exercise that, uh, you know, uh, that was uh, I'm still at Oxford University. After that, I still had a chance, and I got a job at Center for Global Development. And as part of the, probably the best uh, data and policy, policy uh, agency in the world in terms of issues to do with growth and development, gender equalities. Uh, and I work there and I'm still a senior fellow at Center for Global Development. I don't know if there is any presidential candidate or anyone who is seeking office today in our country. Now, now if, if, sorry, to, if I can bring you back home with your issue of going into presidency. During your work as EFCC chairman, you must have actually related with then, then President Obisha uh, Bamba Yes. And one of the main issues that is coming out of this campaign is that no Ribadu is being uh, sponsored by the Obasanjo camp to actually divide the northern vote and give um, Gulag Jonathan the lead. That's what they say. I hear all sorts of theories. But you know, I've been going through that. When you confront, you know, uh, people who are not being fair to their own people, when you try to see if you bring change, they will always fight you. I've seen that happen in my life. During the EFCT days, and even after that, at a point I almost lost my life in the course of trying to, when they were desperately trying to uh, go after and get me eliminated. But I, I thank God, I'm alive, I'm, I'm still standing. And they will never give up. They will always get something to say. So you're not being sponsored by Of course, how can? For God's sake, I never knew Obasanji before I started my EFCC job. Or Obasanji never got me into police work. Obasanji didn't know me until the tail end of 2003. And after 2007, after I left EFCC, I have not spoken to Obasanjo. I never called him, he never called me for well over two years. I swear to God, the issue of not even you. talking on telephone, mm. but still people will talk about me and Obasanjo. Well, what about the issue of you using uh, the EFCC to pursue his political That opponents. is the issue. And then you ask them, who are the people? Go to the records and see the people we attempted to bring to justice. They are all PDP people. They are all people who are close to him. They are all cycle of people within the PDP. But it's easy for you to you know, conveniently change things because it's an easy target, because it's soft. You can always say that, yes, no Guribado, because you work under Obasanjo. But people forgot that almost everybody in this country worked under Obasanjo. I think Obakan was his vice president. Nobody is talking about it. Ibrahim Babangida also was a member of his own supplementary council. General Buhari was his minister of petroleum. Every individual you could call today who worked or worked for Obasanjo worked under Obasanjo. But it is only new Ribadu because I had a chance as a public servant to have an opportunity for me to contribute to my country that it has become an issue in my own case. Why aren't they talking about the others? All of them, nobody, all people worked under Obasanjo. So Obasanjo never interfered? Absolutely okay. no, never. And it could not have been. How possible? You know, it's one thing in the fight against corruption. The moment you allow yourself to be used, forget about results. We got results simply because we were able to overcome that. We were not corrupt and we did not allow ourselves to be used or misused. And that's why we can tell you, yes, we have something to show for it. We had convictions to show. We had recoveries to show. Indeed, the work war, war, uh, took place. We have the EFCC as it is today to show that indeed we succeeded in what we wanted to do. If you allow yourself to be used in any way, it is impossible for you to get that result. Then we should. We have the issue of uh, Mrs. Jonathan. There, there, there's been uh, reports out there or, um, um, online saying. Um, she was prosecuted by your EFCC or she was indicted for trying to take money out you of know, the country. That's the sad part of it. It's so tragic. As much as I now totally disagree with uh, 
the president in the way he is managing the country. As much as I totally disagree with PDP, and I will never come close to PDP as it is today, unless, of course, there is a change in the way PDP manage them, themselves. As much as I disagree with them, with them, I will never be the one to unfairly, you know, go after people for just sake of politics or to take advantage out of it. Of course, people ask me and challenge me. It was a public in, uh, uh, um, media event. Someone asked me, did you ever arrest the wife of uh, our Lord president? Martin. Or did you ever? I said, never. While I was in the EFCC, while, uh, while I was in charge of the EFCC, we never took her in to say that we investigated her. We never charged her for anything. Never. And that I remember as at that time, there were one or two issues that came up. One, of course, we were getting complaints and petitions against people. This is Nigeria for you. You need to see tons and tons of complaints and petitions against individuals, especially during politics. It's possible at the time when they were playing their own politics, people were writing. And I can tell you, no one single politician that somehow people did not petition against. And it's possible as at that time there were petitions against her. And we always take these petitions. And I think even in one of my presentations before the National Assembly, we presented petitions that we received against political office holders. It's possible we might have also put as part of those petitions what people were complaining against the then governor of Mayo uh, State. And people might have pitied us being mm -hmm. a case against her. But usually what happened in our own case, when we receive petitions, we go through it. We look at the merit. We check and see, is something that we could go in and move forward with investigation? Or it is just a frivolous uh, petition? Those petitions were thoroughly checked. And if there is nothing in terms of anything of substance for you to go on with investigation, we do not do so. But we all give them equal attention at the beginning. At the end of the day, there are petitions that you know it belongs to the dustbin. There are petitions that you must take action. In the case of that lady, I can assure you, while I was chairman of EFCC, we never invited her. We never investigated her. And there was no situation, no one incident I could remember as an individual why we had to investigate her or even not to talk of charging her to court.